now I know what my plan is. I know what assets I need and what things I'll need to create in order to build these sequential images of at least these nine keyframes, but more than likely 20, 30, 40 frames or more to get smooth transitions between these. But these are the main elements I need. So because I need you to, to use at least one element you've already created, you're not starting from zero. What you get to do, because this is the final assignment that uses compositing, is use something you've already created. And the thing I've already created is my exercise two emoji. There it is. So I want to take my, my best resource for this, which has all the different layers, my PSD file, and I'm going to copy it into my assignment three folder. Now to copy on a Mac, you hold down option, drag and drop. And instead of moving it, it will make a duplicate. And I'm going to open this up and I'm going to rename it. So I'm gonna open it up, careful not to overwrite my original file, which is why I duplicated it into a new folder. But as long as we're careful to say save as and then organize it in somewhere different, we'll be fine. So this has lots and lots of different assets already in it. That's why I like using the emoji exercise for animation. And all of those individual assets are really easy to understand. They're just, they are just simple shapes with effects added on top that can be taken away. So the nose is all in this one layer group. Same thing with the eyes. Same thing with the, the tongue and the groove on the tongue. And I could actually go through and label all of these things, which isn't a bad idea, like the whiskers, the icicles, all the different shapes. But first what I want to do is make this a square format, right? I have my emoji and it's on an empty background. My setting is an, a blank empty background. So I'm going to keep that, but I want it to be a perfect square. So I'm going to use the crop tool and under the crop tool options, I'm going to say a ratio of one to one. And that's going to force it into a square. I can then decide the size to make that square and then move it around until it frames my animation the way I want. And you can use your arrow keys to kind of nudge it. And I'm going for symmetry here, and then I'm gonna hit return. Now, at the end of the day, our animation is going to be 8 inches by 8 inches by 150 pixels per inch. Right now, my animation is, or my, my assets are, closer to 9 inches by 9 inches by 300 pixels per inch. So I can go ahead and change that to 8 by 8. I'm going to check resample so I can change the resolution and make it 150. Now, why would I intentionally degrade my image, cut the pixels by more than a half? Well, that's, was, that's because just as a single image, it was around 28 megabytes before, and now just changing the size, it's only about four megabytes. The problem is when you change assets, with effects, the effect will change, right? Because you set the effect to be a certain texture size on that. So this is what I'm gonna recommend instead. Instead of changing it at the beginning to eight by eight, change it once it becomes necessary <laughs> to the lower resolution, because what we're gonna end up doing is rasterizing all of these things. And a big part of animation and setting up assets is simplifying things. So my first step is just to crop it to a square. 
and then save it as a different name. And this is not going to be my finished animation file. This is going to be what's called my assets file. So this is assignment number three, animation assets. This animation assets file, make sure it saves, it's my PSD. It's the one, it's like a treasure chest of all the things I can play with for my animation. So I like to use the metaphor of, of stop motion, a film like The Nightmare Before Christmas. And stop motion, also called stop frame animation, is where you use photography to capture one frame at a time, like one photo at a time. And then, you simply play those photos back in sequence. And we're gonna be just building up in the frame as well. You are allowed to create new assets. The only requirement is you have to use something that you've already created as part of your animation. But it can just be a background, it can just be something that comes in at the end, and you can create totally new things. And we, we all will have to create some new assets, as long as you have at least one asset that's something you've already created. Yeah, Wallace and Gromit is fantastic. And it was originally done as a student film by Nick Park, yep. Incredibly labor, <laughs> labor heavy. Mm-hmm. I, so exactly. So that's why I wanted to show this. So when you're making stop motion, it might start as like a simple storyboard, right? But then you have to know from your drawings, your plans, all the different characters and settings you need to build. And then they build those in real space, like miniature stage sets. And then they pose their characters on them. And then if they want to change the expressions, they they have to re-sculpt the head or they have to use an additional head because they'll keep multiples on and on and on. And then it doesn't take any fancy equipment to do it. You just need to capture the image. So what we're going to do is we're going to construct our scenes on the stage. We're going to have a stage Photoshop file and we're going to build that stage out of our assets Photoshop file. Our assets is like the treasure box with all of Gromit's heads, all of Wallace's mouths, mouths, and all the finger movements, all that kind of thing, depending on the story you're trying to tell. So I've got my assets. Now I need to simplify my assets. Using my storyboard, keeping that in mind, what makes sense? What can I merge together? What can I label and simplify? And then what new things do I need to build? So this is basically my last frame. That's just how my animation works out. So if this is my last frame, I can already turn this into a finished keyframe. And this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to click on the, the top most visible layer and I'm gonna hold down option and then I'm gonna say layer <coughs> merge visible. And what that will do you have to hold down option to do it because if you just go to layer merge visible, it will collapse everything into one layer. But if I hold down option and do it, it will put it all on a new layer on top. Then, then I'm going to take that layer, which is already rasterized and is everything that's here. And I'm going to copy it. I'm going to say edit. Well, first I'm going to select it all. So I'm going to say edit select all. Why am I not seeing it here? So the way you select all is you hit Command A. So you hit Command A on a Mac, Control A on a PC to select it all. Uh, yeah, they take, they've taken away the, uh, the select option in the same way that it used to be under Edit. And then once it's all selected, you're going to say Command C to copy it. You can find these under the Edit option. Now, I'm going to create a new file. 
And because we copied something to our clipboard, that's bizarre. It should be eight, well, we'll just say file new because we need it to be eight inches by eight inches. Actually, we, we don't. We need it to be whatever square we originally have. So let me see what the image size is. Yeah, this is exact. Interesting. Oh, I know why. I got it. I need to add a blank white background behind it. So this is good. So with our emojis, remember we designed these emojis to be on, on empty space, right? The problem is when you copy something that's on empty space, it's only gonna copy it up to the edges of where you have pixels. So I need to add an asset or add a layer to my exercise just behind everything that's just a filled white layer. So I can say edit fill for this white background layer. So it fills in with just white. Now when I, I'm gonna delete the merge layer, now I'm gonna do it again, where I click on the topmost visible layer and I go to layer and I say merge visible while holding down option. So if you need a shortcut, it's a pretty complicated one. It would be option shift command E. <laughs> so I usually just hold down option and scroll to merge visible. We'll get lots of practice at this. This is the equivalent of us taking a photograph of everything we just set up to shoot. Okay, now it's all merged onto one layer. Now we can say command A. And once you've hit command A, you'll see that what's selected because you'll see the little dancing ants, marching ants around the whole of your square. And then you're going to say edit copy. Command C is the shortcut. And now you're gonna say file new. And it's gonna give us from the clipboard that we copied the exact pixel dimensions and then we're going to give it a name. Actually, let's see, let's just say create, and then we'll give it a name when we save it. Okay, this opened up just a blank space that's the right size. Now we have to say edit paste. And then we have our first frame. This file is what we call the stage file. So I'm going to say save as, and then name this. I'm gonna name it my animation stage. So I have an animation assets file and an animation stage file. Assets here, stage here. You might not be ready to have even start a stage file yet. I'm gonna mark it as orange. And the reason you might not be ready is you might not have a finished frame. Most of our work in the beginning is gonna be spent in this assets file, which is here. So I have them side by side. But let's just make a really simple animation just to show you how this works. Then I go back to assets and I delete that merged layer. And I delete it first by saying Command D to deselect and then delete the layer. Because if I don't hit Command D first, it will just delete everything that's inside that layer. Now, if I wanna make a change, right? Cause that's what animation is, changing from frame to frame. I'll just do a really simple animation where I'll start turning things off. So I'll turn off that top layer. Then what do I do? I go to my next visible layer where the eye is. I hold down option and I say layer merge visible while holding down option. Because I have a background that's white, that background can be anything in my assets, right? I'm not making any changes to my background. This is the new frame. I hit Command A. Once it's all selected, I hit Command C to copy it. And then I go to my stage and I just hit Command V. And that will put the new frame on top of my last frame. So I have my first animation. I could simply toggle between these two and that's animation. 